Uh, comment on one of my videos was to show you a little bit about my worm operation. And I've showed you my rows before. Uh, there's five of them, about 100 foot long each. And this is our feeding process. We lay produce in the summertime and when it gets hot, we don't do the whole row with produce. We do every other spot here trying to keep it from heating up too much and if it does heat up they can they can move over to the next project uh, we also get so much produce that sometimes we overlap it too much this morning is Monday and Monday's our biggest day for getting produce and Monday is also our day that we harvest for shipping so I have a lot to do so um, <laughs> since I had so much produce this morning basically everything I threw on this row was just from this morning. It's taken me a couple hours to get it laid out and separated. Some goes to the animals. And uh, in between that, I've been harvesting worms. You can see, well, I don't know how much you can see it. We've been, this is kind of worked up here where I've been harvesting worms. We've probably got about five or six pounds so far. Um, this is the part that, you know, if it, if it turns out well, you get excited because you see tons of worms. This is stuff I covered up uh, a few days ago, and we had a whole bunch of rain. And uh, you can see here, there's lots of produce underneath, and it's starting to get soft. And the worms are just coming from everywhere to get to the soft stuff. Days like this, it's not real hard to get the amount of worms you need to get. Um, I'll probably be harvesting quite a bit today because uh, we've had some really nice rains, which has cooled down the compost and brought the worms up. And then in a couple days, we're going to have a little heat wave. And a lot of worms will probably die from that because they'll be up in all this and it'll get too hot. Now, I have a watering system along all my rows. And I, I try and keep up with that as best I can. Uh, most of these worms, what they do when it gets hot is they come to the top because uh, the produce underneath is what's heating so they'll try and run away from it sometimes they'll go down sometimes they'll go up the ones that go up usually get trapped and uh, so I keep watering it to rescue them um, this is uh, basically what we've built up over the winter we, we harvest every week but we don't harvest I don't when I harvest in my rows I don't harvest a whole a whole row coming out I'll harvest like a one foot section and then I'll move 10 feet over and then I'll harvest a one foot section. So I never empty out my worms. One thing that a lot of new worm growers will do, even if they have an operation this large, is uh, they'll go through starting at the beginning of a row or beginning of a bin and they'll take as many worms as they can get right off the top. And what they'll do is they'll decimate their population. And what I need I need to get worms when I harvest, but at the same time, I need to keep the worms working on breaking all this down. I mean, it's 2,000 pounds today, and so I need I need 100 pounds of worms here to get this broken down real fast. Because in a week or so more, I'll be putting more on top of it. Now the bacteria and the fungi are going to break a lot of it down for them, and that's... And then it makes it soft, and then they go dive right into it. Yeah, today's been just a really good day for harvesting. It's about 60 degrees, 60, 65 right now, and definitely wet from the rains last night. And the compost temperature right here is in the 70s. I have hit some spots that were actually up in the upper 80s. Uh, still the worms are in it, but they're right on the edge. If it gets any warmer, it'll start killing them. Uh, the stress isn't there yet, but like I say, there's a lot of harvesting I need to do, a lot of watering I gotta do to keep it alive.
So basically, I pre-harvest without doing, without disturbing my compost too much. Uh, dirty hands, but if I turn this over too much, it'll really heat up. So I only want to disturb as little as possible and get the worms out at the same time. This it's uh it's June 24th and this time of year a lot of the worm suppliers are running out. Um so I what I do also is I limit my sales this time of year that a lot of worm suppliers do. Um ones that have had experiences with running out. Again, you know, I I, I do want to sell the worms, but I don't want to run my stock out where I can't get anything done and then I have to wait 6 months for the population to get back up. And while I'm waiting that six months, I can't, I can't compost with the red worms, or get that much compost done. Well, that's the worm operation. I mean, there's a lot more to it. We still have our harvesting to do and uh, a lot of things you've seen on the videos. But, uh, I mean, you see all the boxes today. There was uh, 30 boxes and 12, 12 bags of produce from in the truck this morning. So it, it's a lot to do. If you're thinking about becoming a worm supplier, there's a lot of uh, work to do. I mean, you can do a smaller operation, and a lot of times the smaller operation works easier in a bin. You actually get a higher worm output when you're growing in a bin, because you can control the temperatures and the food and all that. But uh, as you get bigger, a lot of times you start getting a lot of produce, so you have to move outside the bins. We still use the bins for small production and, and quick harvesting and stuff like that. And our high-end high uh, castings, this isn't as controlled as, as much as our, our bins are as far as what goes in it.